Today we have a brand new deck submitted by one of our amazing mods. It's called The Perfect Spark. Let's see how it goes. What is going on, everybody? And yes, indeed, we do have a really awesome little deck here. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Before we jump into that, though, I want to remind you, if you have not listened to the Glorious Sunrise podcast this morning, please make sure you do. We've been doing that every Monday. Uh, John and I, Country Fried and I, have been doing that podcast for the last number of weeks, I believe five or six weeks. Uh, and it's been an absolute blast and you guys seem to enjoy it. And so we want to keep that going. If you've got ideas on the episodes, if you've got comments for the episodes, Make sure that you leave them in the video description. Uh, we do want to talk to you guys and make this a community discussion podcast, not just him and I kind of spouting off about stuff. So feel free, uh, interact with us there. It's a really great opportunity for you to share your opinions. Uh, again, do so safely, do so responsibly. Don't don't put others down and all that stuff. But we're just there to have some fun and talk about magic. So uh, all that aside. We're going to take a look at today's deck. This is brought to us by Jeremy, who is one of our mods in Discord. I want to say a huge, huge thank you to both uh, Jeremy and Rachel for uh, all the work that they've put in uh, in the Discord, but also continue to put in now on stream as well. Uh, they've really been stepping up and doing a lot of work there. So if you get the opportunity, go ahead and thank them. Uh, very, very great individuals, and we're lucky to have them as part of the It Resolves family. Uh, this is the deck that he put together, and it's called, uh, affectionately, The Perfect Spark. Uh, and the idea is very simple. It is an Anvil deck, so Uni called Anvil. We've got Dragon Spark Reactor. Uh, he does have the Patchwork Automaton in here, which is such a great early game play because it's so difficult to deal with. Uh, and the idea is basically we're going to try and build up a lot of counters on all these, uh, or on the uh, Reactor as well as the Automaton, finish them off with a great Obnixilis off of the Patchwork Automaton, or uh, af off of the uh, Dragon Spark Reactor. We've got most of the usual suspects. Voltaic Surge is in here. Uh, we do have the Reinforced Ronin, which can come down and then come back. It's a really nice little enabler for the deck. Uh, Experimental Synthesizer, a great way to kind of keep the, the deck moving and also trigger stuff. The, the Blood Fountain. We've got basically all the stuff you'd expect. Uh, we do have a Soul Ripper in here as well, which is kind of a nice one. Um, I really do like this card. I haven't played with this very much, so I'm curious to see how this one goes. Uh, of course, the Meat Hook Massacre in here, and then, like I said, that Obnixilis at the top end to really, really uh, get in there for a big ultimate if we can, which would be really awesome. So, we're going to see how this one goes. Uh, I have only tested once. I did lose the game. However, it was quite close, so I'm really intrigued to see if we can get some wins with this. I do think we'll be able to. It's a really great deck. So, let's jump in. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys. Here we are for game number one. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we could definitely keep this. We've got the Deadly Dispute to help us draw further. We also have the Meat Hook Massacre, which is just super helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and... No reason not to get in for some damage here. Uh, two damage to the face. I'm super into that. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, and again, here we'll have some options later on in the game, which is great. Uh, excellent. So I think what we'll do is go ahead and create the Blood Fountains token. Uh, since we can't do everything we want to do i'd rather go ahead and get something committed to the board that's going to stay um and then we can keep moving forward with these as we go through but uh yeah this seems like a great start honestly um kind of not doing anything which is nice <laughs> uh so we kind of get to throw some stuff at him here let's do this uh this is part of where this gets so so good because again the uh the automaton's not easy to deal with um, and this really, really gets the, uh, the counters going on it. So we'll see if we can get this thing up to a really nice, uh, power toughness level and, uh, start getting some major, major damage in. Nice. Very good. Uh, cool. That's kind of fine. Um, not really upset by that. I'm not going to block. Uh, interesting. So we could just kill this, uh, which is probably just the right play, honestly. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Um, well, you know what? I guess we can wait. We don't have to have to pull that trigger quite yet, so let's not. Let's just get in for as much damage as we'd like. The only thing this does punish is like a snakeskin veil. Uh, so maybe it is right to go ahead and do this. So. Let's do that. We'll sack that blood token. That's fine. I don't love the idea of 
having to kill that on our turn but the reality is if they do i mean we know they're running green if they happen to have a protection spell which isn't unlikely when you when you're thinking of devilish valet you're thinking of a combo deck so they're trying to get a lot of creatures on the field at once and take advantage of that i imagine um generally i don't think you run this as just a basic value creature but see now they're having to commit to play it again which is fine by me um because now we've got just more and more options so uh what do we want to do i think we'll definitely experimental synthesizer hoping to hit a land over basically anything else and there we go fantastic uh so let's go ahead and throw this one out uh let's go ahead and throw this one out <laughs> uh and get in for a big attack uh no reason not to obviously they do have to block something here um and we basically just have to hope that we can't die this upcoming turn um, we've got them to one though. I'm feeling pretty good. Jeremy, the deck is uh, definitely doing what it's supposed to do. So that's good. Uh, we don't even have the anvil or the reactor. Like at this point, it's just the automaton taking over the game. Uh, one thing to consider is that we can use the uh, meat hook massacre to kind of just get the board state where we'd like it. Uh, and then we do need another land, I suppose. But that does get us into some, some majorly good territory here uh we also don't have the uh the treasure token or the um excuse me the you know what i'm talking about all right let's uh let's set up so we can just do this yeah okay so this just wins us the game all right so you can sacrifice something to the anvil which deals one to the opponent so that's the uh, the automatic win that was really awesome that was the most efficient game i think i could have imagined so well done jeremy let's jump into game two what's up guys before we jump into the next game i just want to remind you if you would like to pick up this month's patreon rewards feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves all right guys here we are for game number two uh this is an interesting hand but i'm gonna try it uh as a quick reminder as well uh as we're jumping into game two here guys um if you have not hung out with john on stream please feel free to do so uh he's really been having a blast with it you guys have really been you know showing up in uh in troves to to hang out with him and have a good time we really appreciate that it's a great opportunity for us to do as it resolves to do a bit more of a community push which i think is really great uh i've been wanting to do that for a long time and i just time wise never worked out for me uh thankfully john was so kind and was able to step in and have a great time with us and so i do really appreciate that opportunity from him uh and you know hopefully we can we can all have a great time i think that's really the goal um i'm gonna go ahead and throw this out i know we're wasting technically a spell here we probably should have played in a slightly different order but uh i'm just gonna go ahead and get that out and yeah we're gonna have to ditch an anvil here which isn't ideal but that's fine um sure what this does allow us to do is sacrifice the synthesizer to the anvil and get a block what i have found uh in testing with this deck is that not everybody remembers that you can do this at instant speed so they'll a lot of times just attack in like right now and we could just do this um and get a basically free block <laughs> um would love to be able to play that deadly dispute but uh, we don't have, by the way, uh, an artifact creature. Um, is that what? Yeah, okay. Interesting. Um, I think we just do this. I don't love doing this because I would rather get like something else down, but I think that's fine. Uh, oh, it's during your turn. Duh. <laughs> of course. Uh, so that was a bit of a mistake on my end. That's one thing to consider. The anvil only creates the choke, the the one one if it's your turn. Good to know. Uh, obviously, I don't play with anvil all that often, so I have played it once. But all right. So they're obviously just trying to mill a bunch. Uh, looks like Simic mill. They do have Slogurk in the the so or in the uh, graveyard here. Very curious to see what they're trying to do. For each creature card in your graveyard. Very nice. Cool. Alright. Let's see what happens. Uh, also, guys, just as a quick heads up. Uh, there's going to be some potential changes happening in the office space. So, this space. Um, 
you'll notice there's like a window behind me we got guitars back here we got the logo over here which you can't see at the moment we might be changing the space up a little bit um my wife and i have been we're so for those of you who don't know and without oversharing we are in a two-bedroom townhome uh so we have our bedroom and then we have a guest bedroom which is also this office uh because a i work from home but b we also have people come stay the night occasionally like family members from out of town and stuff and so uh while our opponent is timing out um we want to be able to keep the bed but it's a full queen size bed which means it takes up a lot of room uh which isn't bad i mean it's a great bed but we're a little like kind of kind of frustrated on space we just don't have enough of it uh, and so what we're trying to do is minimize the space that it's taking up. And with that, I might be getting a new desk space. We might be um, creating a little bit of a different vibe, which I'm excited about because we kind of needed a little bit of a shakeup, I think, in this room. Um, but that does mean like desk space, everything might change. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. We can Voltaic Surge or Voltage Surge. Wow. Uh, let's do this. That's fine. We do want to keep some creatures on the battlefield for the uh, the Soul Ripper here. I feel like that's kind of important. Um, yeah. I think we'll just pass now. Um, here's the thing. What we can do is Voltage Surge the Spider without having to sacrifice an artifact if we want. Oh. All right, well, this makes my decision a lot easier. Oh, no. Crap. That was just a mistake. Oh, no. No. That was an oops. All right. That's okay. Uh, I was trying to... I didn't mean to submit zero. I meant to sacrifice the blood token, and I just clicked the wrong thing. That was really silly. Um, cool. Well, it happens. You know? That's part of life. <laughs> One thing that uh, Country Fried and I do talk about on the podcast is the the realism. So we talked about net decking today, uh, which was a really, really interesting topic as it turned out. But uh, one of the things that we kind of discussed there is that some people, especially content creators, and I don't know how we got to this topic, but a lot of content creators love to, you know, like not fake it. They don't fake anything, but what they're doing is like... You open up with the win, as, as John said, you open up with the win and you close with the win. That's how you keep viewership and all that stuff. And a lot of content creators are kind of, I won't say guilty of doing that, but definitely, you know, they, they try and get the wins and show you the wins and not necessarily show you everything. Uh, and that's okay. It's not like that's the end of the world or anything like that, but it is just one of those things where it's like, I, I personally don't love that. I show you exactly what's going on, unless, barring some crazy mishap where, like, the client crashes or something ridiculous like that. Like, I'm always going to show you guys every little thing that happens. So, uh, it's kind of interesting because, you know, some, some content creators have a different perspective, but I will show you every single loss that I have, which, unfortunately, is more than I'd care to admit, but that's okay. Um... Honestly, I think we just plus up both here. Here's my thing. Um, we kind of want to force them to have to, like, do something crazy to kill both of these. And so we're going to force them to split the damage. And then we can meat hook and get a get away with killing everything on the field. So that's kind of nice. They do have quite a lot going on. Um, so I assume they take out the two. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Is this the legendary? No, it's the token. Okay, and they are going to go for this one too. Wow. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Uh, crucially, they did not use the ability, which is very good. They put a Willow Geist. I hope they just play it. Because we can just... Yeah. We're just going to end up meat hooking for three. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Uh, we're going to meet hook for three. Seems like an easy thing to do. We get to do this first also. Uh, so we'll see. They may have like some counter spell or something strange. I kind of doubt a counter spell. Oh, they're going to fading hope the Willow Geist. 
Sure. That's pretty good. Scribe bottom, that's helpful to know. Doesn't matter which one. Excellent. Uh, we'll play you. I am going to go ahead and sacrifice the fountain. We do want to get a creature going here, I think. Uh, and I will just go ahead and plus up again. Uh, to keep this out of range of, like, just an easy kill spell, I feel like this is worth it. Uh, sure. That's fine. There's the Willow Geist. Great card. Um, kind of an interesting card. So, I mean, this is the way they win, right? It's trample. It's going to be kind of tricky to uh, to beat. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, hmm. All right. Hear me out. <laughs> I don't think this is the right play, but I think this is the fun play, and that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> We're here for the fun plays. Um, all right. So we'll keep this one. Uh, let's plus. <laughs> let's plus. Wow, they just are super cool with taking all that damage. Uh, all right, sick. So now we've got two very reasonably strong Obnixiluses. They've got a lot of these little croaking counterparts, but that's kind of it. Um, they do trigger the Willow Geist, though, so that is a consideration. Uh, the trick is we can just start pinging them, though, uh, and that's fine by me, so. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. There's really no reason in blocking here then. We can just kind of take it because uh, this Obnix list is going to go down. So, yeah, that's cool. They're all attacking and these have trample, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Let's make sure we do the right one. So this does ping them now for two. So that's kind of the trick is we've got them on a clock regardless at this point so it doesn't really matter what they do um i mean it does but not to that extent uh let's go ahead and plus okay well they just lost <laughs> sick we did it uh that was kind of a a game full of misplays on my end but we were still able able to uh secure that win jeremy so far we're doing really well let's jump into a game three all right guys here we are for game number three this is definitely going to be our last game but how do we feel about this one um like it's okay i vote we try it i'm not sold on it it doesn't have a ton uh that we get to do right off the bat just because there's not we need to have something like a blood fountain or you know something to throw out just a basic artifact that we can then sack to the anvil to kind of get it going um, but we'll see. We could be up against a uh, similar deck here. Although it looks like maybe not. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, I'm going to play the reactor. We're going to try and get that going. Um, we've got multiples and these do quite a bit of damage the earlier you get them down. So I think at this point we're just hoping to grab a land. Uh, a red source would be ideal so we can voltage surge plus anvil uh, or plus reactor whichever one we see fit um, and yeah I mean they're gonna get in for a damage here but I'm not I'm not particularly worried about that uh, so much interesting okay um, not exactly what we wanted for sure Let's go ahead and play the anvil here. That's going to step that up. And then I think we just pass. Again, we're kind of in setup and we're getting a little unlucky by not hitting lands. But the reality is this isn't a very high land count style deck. This is maxing out at three. So this isn't a surprise by any means. Um, so this is Esper or something. Okay. 
Another anvil. My goodness, we have so many anvils. Um, all right, so what's the play? What is the play? Um, hmm. It's a really sticky situation we're finding ourselves in. I'm gonna anvil. I think I will go ahead and do this. Uh, I know we're sacrificing one of the anvils here, but we get a couple of two twos. We also get dragon spark reactor or a couple of one ones, but um, we also get a bunch of counters on the reactor. So at some point this is gonna be able to theoretically start taking things down. Uh, we also can just voltage surge on this to get rid of it. All right. Uh, not great. That's like the worst land we could have drawn. Um, but that's fine. Uh, I think we just kind of like have to deadly dispute. Uh, and I am doing it on our turn because again, the anvil, like that matters significantly in that world. Uh, we should have waited on the land. That would have been helpful. Um... All right, so I think we pass uh, leaving up the, the surge. Because what there is a world where we double block Edgar and then surge, but I, I don't love that. That's like a three for one, basically. That seems really bad. Um, I also kind of just want to save this because we can do so much with it, um, with the reactor. But I guess we can do that anyway, so... We're just going to deal to here. Not a very exciting play by any means. Um, but we're just going to deal to here. I guess we could have... Uh, maybe it would have been better to... Yeah, that's okay. We're learning. We're learning. It might have been better to kill this uh, by sacrificing a 1-1. One -one. Alright, so let's activate this. Um, just to ping him for one. Alright. Um... Do we have to go ahead and hit the reactor is my question. Like it's probably correct to do that. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, we can get rid of that. We do get our little one one in the process, which is nice. Um, all right. Don't love this. We're definitely on the back foot here. Um, and a lot of that is due to my own mistakes here. So we're, we're gonna try and do the best we can, but we'll see. Um, I think we can just block here. We've got the experimental synthesizer, which we can use to sack to create another 1-1. One -one. That's one thing that this deck is pretty good at, is just randomly creating a bunch of 1-1s. One <laughs> Let's do things in a semi-correct order though, because this the reactor is how we finish the game. Uh, hopefully we hit a land. Cool. That's good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. This creates a bunch of one ones and gets the reactor up a good bit here. Um, all right, excellent. So, I mean, we're not quite halfway there, but we're getting there. Um, and we are able to deal some damage here, so... We'll see what happens. Uh, we're not in danger of dying yet. At least not super in danger of dying. Um, they are going to do that. That's fine. We'll just go ahead and sack. Might as well ping him. I mean, there's no reason not to. Um, we do have the reinforced Ronin that we can use to kind of re-trigger everything here, which is great. Um, so we'll see what they do. Like just play a land okay um we can just hive also but i think this is just better uh let's do this i guess we can do both right we don't just have to pick one uh so we attack for five let's take value because i don't know if you're trying to bring that back at some point 
Okay. Um, we sack that, and then theoretically, we have the win next turn, but we'll see. Um, all right. So theoretically, what we can do is just reactor them next turn and potentially win. Um, yeah, we did it. Oh my gosh, what a run. Wow. So many misplays, guys. I can't believe we still won all of those games. Uh, let's talk about this really quickly. All right, so first and foremost, again, Jeremy, thank you so much for sharing this list, my friend. Uh, and thank you so much for being a moderator for us. You and Rachel do a phenomenal job. So I do want to give a, a quick shout out to both of you guys uh, for, for the work that you do. But uh, as far as this deck goes, I mean, this was phenomenal, despite the misplays that I made, which they were prevalent. And Jeremy, I am sure you will notice them and point them out. And please do, because I think it's important for everybody else to learn. Um, I know I misplayed a, a good bit, but we still got an undefeated run with this list. And my goodness, is it great. Um, it just always has some kind of out, despite being, you know, it's a relatively cheap deck. It's not like it's filled with tons of heavy hitting kind of cards when it comes to mana uh, costs. So, I mean, you're topping out at basically two, but Obnixilis makes it three. Uh, and it's just, it's able to do so much. It's pretty resilient. Uh, I think that's one of the great things about the reactor deck is in response to a kill spell, you just sacrifice the thing that's being targeted. Uh, and therefore you always have kind of that option. Um, but all in all, it was phenomenal. We got an undefeated run, uh, again, despite the misplays on my end. So Jeremy, great suggestion. Thank you so much for, for, uh, throwing this list together. It was an absolute blast. Uh, really do appreciate it, my friend. Anybody else who does have a deck for us, uh, we really do appreciate any and all submissions. I will say, Sadistic Angel, I mentioned you yesterday at the end of yesterday's video. Uh, I did test out the deck you sent me. Uh, we were talking about it as well on Discord. Unfortunately, it didn't work as well as I was hoping. And uh, I did test it on the ladder and it just was not getting it. It's okay, though. Don't feel discouraged. I just want to mention that I do try and test out the decks beforehand. Uh, and that was one that just didn't quite make it. Uh, so feel free to leave some more submissions, though, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, do make sure you hang out on stream tonight with John. Uh, that's going to be at 7 p.m. Central Time, uh, 7 to 9. So do hang out with him. Uh, come hang out and play some games with him. You can actually challenge him directly if you'd like. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. All the support lately has been amazing. I'll see you guys very soon.